cigar fiction out of the, the, the second or third. And I might be saying, you know, something wrong here. It's up so, there. Yeah, Regardless, it's there. It's second there. or third, it doesn't matter, man. It's there. It's quality. So, he said, Luciano, I, it's very unfortunate. We have a uh, small manufacturing uh, facility now, and we cannot manufacture for private labels. And it's funny because that's exactly when the crown heads jump right in. <laughs> so he expanded his factory, La Tabacalera Alianza, and he created a bigger operation. And uh, the crown heads uh, went right after him, and he started manufacturing cigars for the crown heads. Amazing cigars, by the way. They're uh, today we we manufacture for the crown heads too. Okay. That's one of the reasons why we got the endorsement, I believe. John John Huber is a good friend, Mike too. So we have a very good relationship with those guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of an adventure, you know. We've been uh, growing and growing this business, and now if we're back online, yes, we are. I can uh, I can start revealing. Okay. <laughs> All right, are we ready, folks? This is the big one coming up. Listen closely. So, yeah, as I said, uh, we've been working to other companies on, under NDA for a long time. Uh, we Last year, we produced 2.5 million cigars in our manufacturing facility. Uh, but we always manufacture premium cigars for all our, our clients. So we decided to take a, a step and build our distribution here in the United States, which was a, a big challenge for us. Uh, we wanted to do right and with the right people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we start blending cigars for a long time. We have cigars that are coming out right now. They have been blended three years ago. And they, they have been sitting in our humidor for two years, waiting wow. to be oh, launched. Wow. So this is uh, kind of a breaking news, too. And, and those endorsements, they come because, they like again, we, we have very good friends in the industry. And they know what kind of products we make. Uh, some of our blends, I, I cannot buy... Uh, legal issues uh, reveal. Of course, I no, told you that. So good. Days. But we do have sometimes, uh, some of the times we had a lot of uh, participations uh, that uh, that help us get where we are. So some of some of these guys tried our cigars and they said, "Oh, we like this. Why don't you go and change this or change that?" Okay. And and Pichardo, he's a he's a very <clears throat> humble man too. He was he's always listening. And, and actually, the best tobacconists are the ones who listen. Yeah. If you look at the biggest operations in the tobacco industry today, if you look to Altadis or General Cigars, they are partnering with everybody. So they partner with AJ. They partner with uh, Gilberto Oliva. They partner okay. with, with Arganosa. They're all partnering. Like the, uh, Gurkha just uh -huh. is launching now a new line yeah. that's 100% made in Arganosa. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a complete different manufacturing uh, facility there. So <laughs> that's how the cigar industry is. We, we truly support each other. And if you look, I don't know if you have the, the, the endorsement we got from JC Numa. It's a beautiful endorsement. So he's basically saying we welcome diversity. We welcome new lines. We welcome new cigars. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? Maybe if I can read this, I'll read slow. Absolutely. I'm not the best of reading, <laughs> but that's fine. So new and innovative cigars and companies are very important to the vibrancy of the premium cigar industry. As the oldest family owned cigar company in America, we welcome one of the newest ACE Prime. We have no doubt that their outstanding premium cigars will live up to their name. Drew Newman, General Counsel of J.C. Newman Cigar Company, right from the man himself. Man, you that, know. <laughs> talking about coming from one of the best, that's that's oh, amazing. Congratulations. I still, I still got goosebumps when I hear that. You, <laughs> well, you want me to read it again? That was, <laughs> keep that was, the goose that was going. beautiful. We got to record that sound bite and get that in. Yeah, uh, that's right. You know, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a privilege, you know. I mean, uh, having someone like Drew uh, saying that our cigars are outstanding and so this is something that, uh, I mean, it's priceless. We, we cannot pay for that. Uh, so, yeah, so the news, right? I have to reveal something. I haven't revealed Well, yet. you want to, want to read the other two? Sure, I mean, you know? sure. Hey, Michael, let's, let's keep, let's keep, I'm going to give keep, you that, buddy. Come on. You've been quiet over there. Read that middle one and then go to the second one. We're going to give Michael a chance to get online because uh, we, we're breaking him in. Slowly but surely, he's going to come on and uh, hang with us because right. he's a real good uh, spirits man. And so that's going to be an episode down the road real soon. Go ahead. Take it out. So from uh, EPC Cigars, I've been following the journey of my friend Luciano for over seven years, as well as the development of the Picardo fa uh, factory. 
We celebrate the arrival of this innovative company called ACE Prime and the great cigars they've been creating and wish them great success. Ernesto Perez Carrillo, uh, Cigar Hall of Fame and creator of the best cigar of 2018, EPC Carrillo, Encore Majestic. Wow. Boy, boy. That's some heavy, heavy That's endorsements, serious, buddy. Yeah, those, yeah. those endorsements are just uh, crazy. We didn't expect that. Uh, so we are going to the IPCPR. So we are launching. Uh, yes. At the IPCPR. Four brands. Yes, we're talking about All that. Right. Las Vegas, Las June Vegas. 27th. Are you, are you sure you want to announce this here? Or, uh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, okay. By the way, <laughs> we, we got our yeah. flights. Hey, yeah. We, we booked our flights oh, today. There we go. We're, we're on our way. Looking forward to see you guys there. We're on our so way. We'll, we'll be, be there, there Thursday uh, late afternoon. There we go. No, perfect. Save me a seat. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we got to know where we're guarantee. staying, what the hotel is, you know. <laughs> yeah, but we got we got that figured out, I guess. So great, it's all great. Good. Um, yeah, we launching uh, four brands and eleven different cigars at that show. Eleven. Oh, okay. Eleven. Ooh, and, baby. And two of these brands, I'm going to start with the most uh, <laughs> kind of groundbreaking ones. We are launching two lines that we've been uh, building for a long time called MXS, which stands for Maximum Excellence and Success. Wow. wow. So that brand was developed for uh, sports athletes. Okay. So we have, we're launching uh, two lines at the IPCPR. One, it's for uh, Tiago Splitter. He was an NBA champion for the Spurs in 2014. Played seven seasons for the NBA, an amazing human being, uh, passionate for cigars. That's a requirement. You've got to be passionate yeah. for cigars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they do because some guys, and I'm going to break you there because, yeah. you know, it's important to know a lot of sports guys want to get involved in the, in the industry. They want That's their right. name out That's there, yep. but they don't have the passion of the cigar. So they don't know how to market it, and they think they leave it to their agents or other people. Those are the first ones to fail, right? Am I you right or wrong what? about You're that? You're absolutely right. And you know what? The industry does not respect, I must say this, companies who launch cigars and just brand it with someone's name, mm -hmm. you know. So one of the, the reasons why we decided to really partner with, with Splitter was because he's a passion. Uh, it's his passion. Cigar is his passion. He is a cigar smoker uh, for a long time. Uh, and uh, Splitter is a great human being. And he knows a lot about cigars. You guys will see uh, there will be some uh, uh, press releases coming and some nice uh, videos that we did. And actually, Tiago sat at the table with me, and he learned how to roll a cigar. <laughs> he can roll his own cigar, <laughs> believe it or not. Oh, nice. He can roll his own cigar. That's awesome. awesome. Really well. And really well. Awesome. See, he, he looks like he wants it. He, he actually wants to thrive on this. So That's from true. what you're describing, I totally see success for you and him. Yeah. Because... That they said he's got the passion, and when he does it, and, and you do something yourself, not just putting your name on it, he seems like he's going to stand behind his name. That's right. That's right. And, and how many cigars will be within that line? So for for Splitter, we have uh, two cigars coming out. Uh, they are the same blends, uh, two different sizes. One is a Sublime. It's a six and a half by fifty four. So it's a Sublime. It's a it's a very elegant uh, cigar. It has something very unique, and that I like to make this comparison with Sports Atlas because that cigar, uh, and, and that's kind of our secret. We can tell how we did this, but that cigar starts very mild, not okay. very, but very mild. However, very flavorful, incredibly flavorful. I'm biased, but that's the truth. And you can ask anyone who smoked that cigar; he'll tell you the same thing. It starts at mild. And when you are about two thirds of that cigar, mm -hmm. you will feel you start feeling a lot of strength, and at the end, it becomes a full body cigar. Oh, okay. So it starts mild and gets to a full cigar at the end. Wow. So uh, is this, it a is, this is this or? is not it's not a Maduro. It's a Sumatra wrapper. Okay. Uh, two year fermented Sumatra wrapper, natural wrapper. And uh, we have Nicaraguan's uh, fillers in that cigar. Um, that cigar, it's probably one of the most uh, exquisite cigars we have because of that uh, experience that you, uh, you go through uh, f from a mild cigar to a full cigar in one experience. Yeah, if it, even, if, even if you're not a cigar smoker, 
you're going to smoke to half. Mm -hmm. and then you might stop because it's going to get a little strong for you. Uh, <laughs> if you like medium cigars, you're going to become very curious since the beginning. And then you're going to experience that medium cigar right there until it gets to the last third. And then you're going to probably drop that cigar <laughs> and say, eh, it's kind of too strong for me. I do want to smoke more. But if you are a, a, a connoisseur who really likes to smoke cigars and smoke strong cigars, you'll be impressed with that cigar. Just like the life of an athlete. All those athletes who start in the ABA, they don't get to their full condition at the beginning of the championship. But, but they, they reach their peak at the end. It oh, matures yeah. slowly. It matures slowly yes. to, to the end. So that's the concept of that cigar. And we also have that cigar in a Robusto version, which is a, a, a very interesting cigar, too. You experience the same thing, but in a Robusto size. Mm. And uh, the third, uh, the second cigar, that, the second line of, Mac, of MXS that we are launching, it's the Dominic Wilkins. So Dominic Wilkins, the Dunker, the, the, the Hall of Fame. I don't know. He's, Another base basketball man, player. That guy is, is just fantastic. Uh, he is launching also an MXS cigar at the IPCPR with us. Um, it's a Maduro cigar, a Mexican wrapper, a very unique cigar as well. Uh, why that cigar is unique is because basically you can have that cigar with any drink. Mm -hmm. So you can you can you can have that cigar Pair with, with scotch, anything and can, coffee. Basically, you can pair with anything. Uh, coffee goes uh, with everything. Well, with anything that's normal, right? Yes. You know, the, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a fantastic cigar. Uh, so Dominic will be present there at the show, and that's a big surprise, too. I'm oh, okay. Here Good. Firsthand. Um, how, much, how tall is he? Like seven what? I think he's seven actually one? Uh, six ten. I, think I thought he was seven. seven. Wow. Seven. That's See, amazing. I, Splitter is seven. He was uh, one of the largest. Uh, will NBA Splitter be joining us there in Vegas? Will Splitter, he be coming too? Splitter will be there for the four days. Wow. Wow. Woo, boy. So, okay. Getting excited. Yeah. Now I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be able to meet both there. Uh, they're all going to uh, attend the show. Uh, Dominic will be there for most of the time too. So uh, that, that's kind of exciting. Yeah, maybe they'll give us cool. a sound bite for our show to use. You know, I'll we'll have to talk right. to them about that. Maybe. Well, we'll see where we're going with it for sure. Let's see how for it goes. Sure. Yeah. So another cigar we're launching is a Cuban Experience cigar. Uh, right? Oh, nice. This is, this is home for us now. Nice. Yes, it is. Uh, Long time waiting for this. I like that. I, you guys should invite here uh, Billy and Luisito to talk about that cigar, but we had such an yes. amazing experience in Nicaragua just blending that cigar. You know, it's an interesting story, actually. Pichardo was traveling, so I was the only blender at the factory uh, for the first two days <laughs> while we were trying to build the blend. Um, and we, uh, we got to this very interesting blend. The first one that we came out with was, like, very good. I mean, I liked it. I liked it. I said, you know, let's wait for Pichardo. He'll make something else, and it will... Uh, try with you know different things and we made maybe I don't know 20 different blends just that week you know just kind of to experiment different leaves and stuff mm -hmm. um, so Pichardo came back we tried like maybe another five six seven eight when we were the 20th blend Luisito comes to me and said I like the first one <laughs> really yeah oh, and, then I was, and then I was so proud right I said you gotta be kidding me you're gonna choose my blend over Pichardo's <laughs> Man, wow. that guy, that guy's going to kill me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so the funny story is I actually, my Spanish is okay. I, I have an accent, guys, but it's not a panic accent. <laughs> I speak Portuguese, Italian, and my Spanish is okay. Um, so I, I, uh, I asked the guy, uh, one of my, my, my good friends at the factory, I said, I want this composition. And he said, okay. And I said, I want this binder. He said, okay and make it a double binder here uh, and, and, and bring this blend to me. So I, 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 I'm, I'm controlling myself here because I almost, almost gave the blend. I'm not supposed to. Yep. Ooh, think, yeah, just, well, um, take your time. Yeah. Think before you talk. <laughs> we don't want to get you in trouble here. Well, do, you, funny, do we need to take a little break? Because we can take a break and come back if you uh, want to grab your yeah, thoughts. I'm going to yeah. wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap maybe it up. that's it. Maybe we should do you know, yeah. part, catch part two. Yeah, we well, we'll yeah. wrap up this, and then we're going to go back again Sounds because good, out yeah. of the 11, we're only talking about three. But yeah. we are talking about a Cuban experience. That's our home away from home. There we go. So let's let's no, finish so, off strong with that. So make it short. 
what happened no was, make it long that's no, Cuban. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was uh uh actually the guy didn't understand my instruction and he used a different binder so I was not responsible for the bland. So oh, okay. it, was, it was a uh, accident. It was a happy accident. It was happy accident. <laughs> so I couldn't even take the credit for that one. But uh, we accidentally got a very, very amazing bland. It's one of the three that we'll be presenting at the IPCPR. This awesome. is the El Corazon, which is a, uh, is a Toro size, is a 6 by 52 and uh, we'll be launching also a, a Cuban experience called Elegante. The Elegante is a Lancero, uh, and we also are launching a 6x60, mm -hmm. a good, fat okay. cigar that, that has a lot of strength, a lot of power. It's like a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing taste profile. So. Awesome. Wow. I can't, wait. I can't wait. All right, man. Well, in a month from now, I not know. even. No, no. Can't 25, wait. 24 days will yeah. be there. So let's hold your thoughts on that. We're going to find out about the other uh, eight that we have to talk about. Folks, um, we are just going to take a slight uh, five-minute break, ten-minute break. Uh, we're going to do uh, our second part of the podcast here coming up. And we have our special guests here this evening, the one and only Luciano Acevedo, um, talking about his cigars. And we're going to get into Las Vegas real soon. So, uh Grab yourself a drink, go to the can if you have to, get a good smoke, and come on back. See you in a few. Oh, the other one. There we go.
And we're on. Good evening, folks. It is a Tuesday. Well, no, we can't even no, tell you the days because we got to get past that. Well, that's that's you right. Stop, you stop that. <laughs> just we are the day. Great Lakes uh, Smoke <laughs> Show podcast here with special guest Luciano Acevedo, Acevedo uh, from a, I guess you can say, Luciano Cigars right here. And, folks, if you see this anywhere, you must pick up. The box, not just the cigars. You got to pick up the box. <laughs> this is one that you definitely want in your uh, your own humidor, in your own collection. It is magnificent. Uh, maybe I guess I we can take it a little closer. A what do you think? Is that you can can you see that, folks? Oh yeah, they can see that. Yeah. All right. That's something. We're going to leave it here so everybody can actually, you know, go gaga about it. I mean, it is a picture of Luciano himself. The Traveler. Uh, wow, that, that is awesome. And it's going to be a um, collector's looks, item. You said it's going to be limited to what? 60,000 60, six? cigars. It, That's it nothing. Looks, it looks very narcissistic, but it's. <laughs> I'll tell you the story about that. <laughs> Let's go for it. Let's continue. This, is def this was definitely not my idea, and I have witnesses. <laughs> uh, so it's funny. I, this picture was taken uh, when I was in Paris visiting my daughter. She lives there, and she took this picture without me even seen it and um uh, i kept this picture for a year year and so and a friend of mine kind of tried to surprise me uh he found that picture somewhere and uh he printed it in a box and that friend of mine is actually one of the uh biggest guys in a in a ring industry he's the guy who makes the rings for mo most of the brands in nicaragua oh okay i thought you meant like in the uh, in the ring you know, <laughs> boxer <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he uh, he made me a surprise he showed me this box and he said you should make a cigar with this name you know it's really badass and i said oh, okay maybe one day and uh and my partner actually uh surprised me with this i this whole idea of kind of uh, constructing a, a blend made of a rare leaf, like a limited edition. So this cigar is made out of 100% uh, Pelo de Oro, which is one of the rarest leaves you can possibly find. Um, it's uh, Pelo de Oro. The binder is from uh, Ecuador, also Pelo de Oro, grown our own farms. And we have some Pelo de Oro from Peru, too. Uh, and the funny thing is, uh, until recently, I think there was only three manufacturers that were actually producing Cigars with Pelo de Oro. I don't know if you know the story about Pelo de Oro. But no, that, I don't. What, what is it? So Pelo de Oro was uh, one of the first leaves used by Robina to uh, uh, do his, uh, his first blend and uh, to make his first blend. And he, uh, he basically um, uh, could not sustain that production anymore because there was a huge plague in Cuba. I'm talking about like pre-revolution, mm -hmm. 1967, 68. So... Uh, Pelo de Oro was, was vanished of, of Cuban territory. They, they, they just decided not to grow it anymore because of the plagues. Uh, it's a plague called Pata Negra, which is, uh, uh, would be translated black as plague. Black, black plague or black <laughs> foot or something like that. It's a fungus that basically destroys the plant. Um, and this, those seeds were saved, and, uh, and they tried to grow in Peru, and they were very successful in growing in a, in a specific region of Peru. And they developed that seed into a better seed, and... And now uh, Peru is probably one of the, the only places that you can grow that besides Ecuador and the region where we grow, which mm. is in, uh, in our own farms there. Now, uh, what is interesting about the, the Pelo de Oro is the flavor. Uh, you can't find that flavor in any available cigar out there. Uh, Davidoff figured that out before anyone. Ah, so okay. Davidoff basically uh, started producing a lot of blends with Pelo de Oro. Uh, and he almost, uh, I would say, has the monopoly of that blend, of that uh, specific uh, leaf. Uh, but recently, uh, some companies have tried to produce cigars with that leaf, although it's very, very rare, so they cannot produce it, you know, in, in a larger scale. Um, A.J. Fernandez, Adele, uh, which also gives... A, a nice endorsement as well. He uh, he actually is launching, uh, and it's not a surprise because it just came out today. So I'm not I'm not infringing any okay. announcement. announcement was made. <laughs> announcement that was made. So he announced today 
uh, he's launching the H. Hoopman uh, with Peladora wow, this okay. year, the IPCPR. So I dare to say that maybe there's only four or five manufacturers that actually make a cigar with Peladora, and we are one of them. So this plant now, is it hardy? I mean, it's thriving? Will other people be able to start using it? Yeah, or so is... it's still experimental. I mean, it's it's a lot of people trying to grow that leaf. Uh, again, it's a very sensitive, it's, it's very difficult to grow. Um, so, yeah, but we do have some crops that we are now processing for like a year, two years from now. You know how cigars are. You have to plan at least two years before oh, you yeah. manufacture a cigar. Uh, People say there's over 200 hands that touch a cigar before the cigar gets to, to your mouth. It's true. And also, uh, it's impossible to make a good cigar uh, if that cigar is not fermented at least for 10 months. Uh, this is like what we can do with, with seco, uh, or that's the leaf that helps, you know, the burning of the cigar or uh, with some fillers. But the most of the, the – if you look at our cigars, like – the average aging of our cigars, all the leaves we use to manufacture our cigars are at least two years. This is the average. I have leaves that are five years, and I have leaves that are maybe one year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, one of the lines that we launched at the IPCPR is the Pichardos. So, Kerry is my, my partner's name uh, on the cigar. We're launching four lines. Uh, one that's our uh, probably um, biggest pride which is the classical. It's, uh, it's a blend that I told you guys. Uh, a lot of friends helped us uh, to produce that blend. And we can humbly say that uh, uh, it was, uh, was a journey just to kind of get to exactly that specific taste profile. It took us a long time. And uh, we got to the classical, and the classical, we are mass producing that leaf, so we have plenty. And uh, and also, uh, we are launching another three lines of Pichardo, which is the Reserva Familia, which means family reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, those uh, blends are very unique because we have one with San Andre wrapper. Uh, I'm talking about a grade A San Andre. It's one of the best San Andres you can possibly get. Um, and we have one with uh, Connecticut wrapper. Uh, and that Connecticut is grown in our farms in Ecuador, too. And we have an Havano, a beautiful, beautiful Havano. Yeah. Uh, and the blends are, are, are all, uh, the blends are connected. Uh, they vary in strength, but they're very much connected. So the taste profile of the blends, it's almost like I, I tell uh, Pichard all the time, I said, I want to have a meal today. When I say I want to have a meal, it's because I want to start with the Connecticut and I want to end with the, the full body, with the full body wow. of the San Andres. Mm. Uh, it's almost like you have to, you know that experience I just uh, told you about Maximus mm -hmm. that you can have in one uh, MXS that you can have one in, one in one stick. stick. Yeah. You're gonna stretch this out. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So with Pichardo, you can have that experience with the the, the Connecticut, with the Habano, mm -hmm. and with the San Andreas and the Reserve. The Reserve would be uh, also a limit series. Uh, we will have new reserves coming, but those are are, are very very special. Again, I'm talking about cigars that we've been keeping in our humidor already rolled for over two years. Wow. Beautiful. That's amazing. So you're really going back four years now on this project overall, right? Or I mean, when, when did you actually start, would, would you say? Because it takes a year or two for the thoughts and the process. Now you got two years in already with the leaf hanging out there, and now you're going to uh, uh, open up the, uh, the line. So how long have you been working on these projects? Uh, Roni, I mean, we, we've been working this project for more than that. Uh, again, we, we knew that we would get to this point where we would launch our, our, our brands, and we knew how competitive the market is. Uh, so we decided to really invest time and, and, and really plan this launch. So we've been working on this on this brands and blends for, uh, for a long time. Mm. Uh, some of the cigars have, are planned to be launched four years ago, five years ago. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's exciting. I mean, you know, and the great part is we're going to be there to see this with you. And we're honored. Oh, and, yeah. and I thank you for offering us the opportunity uh, to go out there with you guys and be in your booth and, and go through everything as you guys are going through it. 
And yeah, even that motorcyclist is excited. <laughs> he was about really it. excited. He, about he's running this. to Vegas now, man. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I think he just hit ninety. Well, there. <laughs> well he's excited. I, I he's a special effect or something. <laughs> no, he is out there in the window <laughs> listening to it. We're hitting the, hit the ground running. <laughs> if he leaves now, he'll be in Vegas in time. But um, I'm just curious, how much of the crop will be still in your possession for mm -hmm. future? Of the crop of what of these of these cigars in so other words uh we are, we are a complete vertical operation so we we really try to uh we keep a very strict control of what we can produce what we cannot so if we have a cigar that we are launching that we know we won't have <coughs> the uh how you say it we, we won't have like the consistency because that's the the most uh, delicate part of manufacturing cigars. That's the most important. People yeah. want to experiment that taste, the same taste profile, when they smoke a cigar today and when they smoke a cigar ten years from now. That's right, right. So that is really difficult because remember we're talking about uh, tobacco and tobacco. Uh, we sometimes we have good crops, sometimes we have bad crops, sometimes sure. we have a good weather, sometimes. And I remember. Uh, a, I think this was back in 2012 when we start uh, planting our tobacco. And I remember uh, we got hit for a terrible storm uh, and our leaves came completely different, you mm. know? Uh, so the process of fermenting the tobacco is the most important process, right? So that's when yeah, you yeah. Could, that's how you really build a taste profile. People think it's just blending. It's not just about blending. No. I, can, I can get a leaf from Condega, Nicaragua, from, from Jalapa, Nicaragua, from Peru, from elsewhere. And and get the same proportions of the same blend of the same of all the same leaves, and the cigar might be different, a little bit different at least six months from now, a year from now. So keeping that consistency, you have to control the process of fermentation. Oh yeah. Because if I buy the raw leaf, and I can control that process of fermentation, I know that my cigars will be consistent. I know that I can con fully control how the outcome of my taste profile will be. So the challenge for us is always to uh, keep that consistency. So lines like the Pichardo, lines like the even the, the, the MXS, or, or, uh, or lines like the Cuban Experience are lines that we know we can, we, because we process the tobacco. So mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. that that cigar, uh, five years from now, if you smoke that, the same cigar will be absolutely the same. Uh, the same. So you know you're going to be smoking the same cigar, so you know what to expect. Okay. And giving that to our customers is uh, it's our commitment, and and that's what unfortunately, uh, again, we don't talk about other factories because we are all partners in this industry, but some people don't care about that. Uh, but you know what? In 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 another hand, we have like the Luciano. We are disclosing that we only made sixty thousand of the cigars. And, and we're going to have new special lines coming. This is Luciano the Traveler. Uh, we might have a Luciano the Dreamer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we decided go. to yeah. see or whatever. Uh, the Drifter might be next. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know. So, or the Walker or the, the, the Runner. Wall, whatever, the Runner. <laughs> no, we but consistency know. But I can is launch a new blend, you know what I'm important. saying? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I've had cigars that uh, I knew right away. Yeah. It tasted different. That's right. You know, and that was maybe like a year apart, you know. Yeah. He said, no, it's, it's a difference. I can taste it. And um, I think most people want that, you know, where you know that, that that's the taste. And you yeah. buy that cigar specifically for that taste. One of the great brands out there that I, that I really admire is, are the Crown Heads. So we've been <clears> producing <throat> for, for Crown Heads at least for a year now in our, our factory in, in, in Nicaragua. And the Crown Heads, they don't have a factory. Just like... Patel, Rocky Patel, you know, still to this day, he partnered with Placencia in most of his production. Uh, his, his beautiful factory in Honduras that they, he has together with Placencia. Um, so the Crown Heads don't have a factory. So they make cigars with, with Pepin, with uh, my father's, with Carrillo, and with us. Mm -hmm. And now with Drew State. So, but they embrace it. So what I love about those guys is that they, they are very honest about what they make. They say, this is our blend 2019. This is our blend 2019. You'll, you know, enjoy it because John Huber, he's a tremendous tobacconist. So he, he tried all his cigars. And when he comes to a blend that he likes, he said, this is going to be 
La Caravelas 2019. This is this is the blend that I built in that factory, and I those those guys are replicating exactly what I want. So he embraced it, and 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 that's what people should do, in my opinion. I mean, you know, you got to be honest with your clients. You cannot Absolutely. just uh, no, no. you know come up with uh, with stories. Yeah, and you see a lot of people that do that, and you, sometimes usually it's not even the manufacturers or or the brand owners. Uh, you know. Sometimes the reps, you know, yeah. tell stories. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah stories. that happens, you know. Yeah. Well, the, well, the reps, the reps, they're just trying to them. sell, you know. So, that, so yeah. but you know, I don't want to bet on the reps. Actually, in fact, I believe they are the soul of this business. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So, like we were just talking about, the guys uh, hitting the pavement every yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, Crawl and Brian. I mean, those guys are amazing because they they basically, well, they are the reason why we exist. If yeah. it wasn't for them to go out there and sell our products, we would never be known. <laughs> you know, we need them. Yeah, the, and, and and Brian's territory. I mean, he goes like, what do he say? He's like Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, yeah, Michigan. Those guys He's, travel like crazy. Oh my it's, gosh, it's, they travel more than I do. I I, I applaud him <laughs> for his efforts. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So uh, I'm getting hit over here. Is <laughs> when are the cigars going to be on the shelves? I guess, and these are the locals, so a Cuban experience. Uh, you want to let the people know when you're going to put them on there? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Go so, for it. These cigars are going to be in the shelves uh, from uh, two, uh, June to 28th. So the day of the IPCPR starts, that's when the cigars are going Ooh, to the shelves. nice. So we got a, some pre-orders. And, um, and uh, well, before I forget, the actually final groundbreaking news uh -oh. is that Dominic Wilkins is launching his own brand that would be not MXS signed by Dominic Wilkins will be the Dominic Wilkins, the human highlight film. So, which is his, okay. you know, nice. that's what he's known. So Dominic is launching his own brand uh, for pre-orders at the IPCPR. Is that wow. going, is that going to be uh, your blends that you're doing for him? Absolutely. That's your stuff, right? Okay. Yes, it is. Wow. So Tiago's blend was built uh, by Pichardo and myself. And Dominic Blend has been built by Pichardo. He's done an amazing job with that blend. So we have uh, we are really proud of all the products we are launching at the IPCPR. I, and I, again, I'll, of course, I'm biased to say, <laughs> but as a as a manufacturer and a distributor, I can tell you that uh, that's not one single cigar uh, that we are launching that we are not proud of. Is that all? Uh, do I have eleven here, or are we missing something? We do have eleven cigars. I mean, eleven, eleven Vitolas. Okay. 11 sizes. So five okay. brands, different versions. We have the Pichardo uh, four, uh, four sizes. We have for the Cuban Experience three. We have for Luciano one, for Dominic one, and two for Splitter. Yeah. So there you go. My okay. math is right. Yeah, We've that's 11. 11. That's, that's 11. 11. All right. <laughs> it adds up. Hey, uh, Dan Clark wants to know is uh, will they be available online? So uh, eventually, yes. Uh, so we are wholesalers, so uh, I know that some retailers might uh, put up online. Some platforms have been talking to us. We really want to, we want to, uh, how can I say? Uh, Brick and mortar? Yeah, you want to. Uh, no, we, we want actually to protect and respect the retailers. Yeah. So the problem with going online these days is that, uh, you know, if you sell a cigar for a lower price than people can find in a lounge, you're taking away business yes. from the lounge, from from the those cigar shops. Oh, and yeah. We're very concerned about that. We, we we really respect our customers, and our customers are mainly right now the cigar shops. Of course, you know everybody's our customer, and we want to make sure you know everybody goes to the cigar lounge and enjoy the cigars and can buy cigars. Well, well plus it's the experience it's going the experience. to the lounge. Exactly. I mean, exactly. uh, you wanna... don't want to sit at home yeah. Amazoning your cigar and sitting at home alone i mean get out there with the group get out there with your people exactly. i mean even if you're by yourself you show up to the lounge i mean you can strike up a conversation with anybody there you'll have a, a nice hour to two hours of just you got it that's so, all you need um <laughs> but yes yeah, dance, if, if, dance in california yeah. so yes so what how does one in california get hold of your cigars well we do have pre-orders already in california so uh you know then just uh Send an email to Ronnie here. Send uh, send an email or, or a text message. Or, you know, uh, uh, email address message. is Great Lake Smoke Show at aol.com, folks. If you want to get that to me, I will get it uh, to Luciano and get an answer for you yes. on how you can get these cigars 
anywhere in the world, basically, because we are everywhere in the world. We've known that because we've seen what the countries that were, are listening to us. Or if you're but, uh, email Dan shy. of California, let us know, PM us, and we'll yeah. get that information. And Kyle, what? As a, if you're email shy, you know, reach out to us on uh, Facebook at the Great Lake Smoke Show page here. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll respond to your your answer your questions and answers here for you. Um, uh, we're we're on top of things here, so there we go. Guys, have this uh, band smoking in, throughout all of California now. Yeah, you know what's funny? I I would like if you have time, like talk about. Yeah, yeah we keep got going. plenty of time. Keep going. Uh, going. No, no, we got I, plenty of time. I mean, awesome. we're not even halfway through some of my questions I got for you. We'll off maybe <laughs> around midnight. Well, I want uh, actually know. I want to actually respond to. Uh, to Don Clark for one, one more thing. So we're not saying that we're not going to uh, retail online, okay? So what we want to do is we launch into cigars at the IPCPR, and we do have a lot of pre-orders. Uh, there's a lot of reps from uh, uh, a lot of reps. I'm sorry, a lot of uh, retailers that will be at the show, and we want to, of course, make sure that our cigars are distributed everywhere in the country. Now, uh, if we find that. Uh, in certain regions of the country, our cigar is not well distributed. Yes, we will do a direct sales and we will provide that cigar for that customer. Uh, but again, we want to privilege our uh, retailers because uh, we respect them. Uh, and one of the things I, I, I maybe forgot to mention is that one of our one of our, our partners on distribution here is our folks from the Cuban Experience. So, Billy, Luisito, uh, John, uh, Jamie. <laughs> Yeah. So, Dorothy, yeah, the Dorothy. one who orders so, those cigars. Yeah. The real boss. The real the boss, real indeed. Boss. <laughs> Dorothy is so, the real boss. She's the one that sets are, it all up. They are our partners in the distribution. So thanks to, to them, uh, we have achieved a lot, too. So uh, we got a, a good ground here in Illinois, in the area, in the Midwest uh, um, market. And, uh, and, and, I mean, Billy and Dorothy and Luisito and, and, and Jamie and John, uh, they are our partners in the distribution business too. And they are the ones who actually call my attention to this matter. I said, let's make sure we, 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 you know, we <laughs> help the retailers. Yes. We cannot put out a cigar in the market and just kind of sell for half the price yeah. at, at uh, any web platform and, yeah. and not, you know, that doesn't, that, that's not right. So we want to make sure uh, they are taken care of. But at the same time, uh, if there is some areas in the country that we cannot have our cigar being distributed in that area, we will take care of our customers. Now, you have said that you're going to launch the 28th at a Cuban here. Mm -hmm. Are you launching anywhere else around Chicago, or is it just going to be a Cuban first and see where it goes? And So we're going to have some several soft launches uh, this month, uh, not just the Cuban experience. We have some other launches there, some other lounges that are launching our cigar as well, and we'll, we'll absolutely uh, make it public as Remember, guys, okay. we just we just <laughs> oh, revealing yeah, all that yeah. stuff. I understand. And you, yeah. you know, because you've been coming to the lounge and you see me all the time, and you keep asking questions. I say, and I always say, we'll talk, we'll talk. I know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the enthusiasm it's, and yeah. the excitement that I have for you guys to I succeed. It, yes. I mean, it's the hunger for the info. Yes. No, 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 but it, it's well, not really just the info. You know, it's just that we're, we're so yeah. happy for you. Yeah. We're so happy yeah. that you're reaching this plateau and we're excited to share the journey mm -hmm. with you and to smoke these I, wonderful smokes that you're I, talking about. I, I, and, I just, uh, I'm just excited to be there for the launch party, you know, in Vegas with these guys. I mean, this is going to be awesome. But I think we also have to do it at Cuban on the return. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We have to do yeah, that. We'll yeah. definitely mm -hmm. do that. Once we get well, back from Vegas, but we'll be there for the big party in Vegas. That's, uh, that's, that's yeah. where. <laughs> uh, I've also got a question from sure. Dan again. Mm -hmm. Are there any sample sets planned for the future with all of this? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. So we, we prepared a five-pack sample uh, mm -hmm. that will be uh, available as well. So oh, nice. nice. Yeah. But we awesome. won't talk about that, but that's in the future. Yes. Well, actually, it's in the present. We got the, Oh, oh, oh no, you want to mention what you got then? I mean, <laughs> right. we'll, I've got questions, so I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> so me we'll up. Have, we actually have uh, you know, uh, samples of different uh, bitolas of our lines in one pack. So there'll be several different packs that will be available uh, for for our clients. Wonderful, Very wonderful. Yeah. So uh, tell us what um, what do we look forward to in Vegas? How, how you know how how's this all going to go down? <laughs> well, you know we're excited to know. Well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of curious too. You know, because I I it's just my this is my fourth show. So I've been there a couple times. 
but it's the first time that I go as a distributor. Oh. Uh, so we always go to support our clients. Uh, like I said, we've been manufacturing for many uh, popular brands for a long time. And uh, we always kind of in the backstage of the show. It's the first time that we are in the front stage. Uh, we are one of the sponsors for the IPCPR. So mm -hmm. we are one of the main sponsors for the IPCPR this year. And uh, there's several things that will happen. And some of them are surprise. Okay. Surprises that I cannot review because this That's is IPCPR okay. stuff. It's, right. it's all but, good. Uh, hey, I, I want to be surprised when I get there. So mm -hmm. don't know. You know I don't already spoil told it. you, man. I mean, we got we got two NBA players. We got some <laughs> actors that are coming too. They're well, don't give it all group. away. Don't give it all away. Uh, I can give you one name. We got we have already confirmed uh, Toby Moore, who is on a Billions uh, show, who is coming to our booth as well. Wow. Um, yeah. So talk about our booth. <laughs> yeah. Since we're yeah. going to be That's in acts, the booth, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're going to be in the booth. Are we going to be able to have uh, you know electric and everything to set up our little ta table to talk to all you guys? Well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk about that uh, okay. you and I later. But uh, yeah, we do have some some things going on, and I will fill you in. And we want to make sure you guys are part of all. Okay, wonderful, awesome, very awesome. good. Thank you, know, you. As you can see, we are excited. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really is. We're flying in Thursday and leaving Sunday, but we're there for Friday dinner and, and you know, the rest of the Friday, Saturday. and. Oh, I have one uh, uh, cool thing to uh, maybe give you guys. So we are the sponsors for The Breakfast, which is oh. the first event of the IPCPR. We're going to have uh, a senior uh, executive of Holly Davidson uh, as a keynote for that morning. Oh, wow. Uh, which will be really cool. And Dominic and Tiago and myself will be there. I am, uh, looks like I am introducing the guy. Oh, wow. So, and we got about uh, already 700 uh, people registered for that specific event. Over 3,000 retailers at the IPCPR 2019 wow. already registered for the show. So it's going to be cow. a big show. Wow. wow. So as the press, we get in to have breakfast with you guys and listen to you and take pictures and we can Ronnie, do got, the media. You got, you got everything, Ronnie. Come on. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm just going to let our people know. You know, that we, you know we're hitting it big, folks. We're hitting it big. We got to let, the, we gotta let everybody folks. know that we're, uh, we're bringing an exclusive yes. to them. So we want them to be excited. And hear of the adventures of uh, Luciano and company. Yeah, we we've been brushing up on our using our phones as interview tools, so we're we're gonna be mobile with interviews and everything. So it's gonna be awesome. it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, we we are excited for sure, no question about it. Um, after Vegas, do you have plans on? I know you talk about soft openings. We got that. What is going to be next in line for for you guys in general? Are we having something major going on at the Cuban? Are we going to be doing like a monthly thing, introducing the, more lines coming on? What do you foresee? So uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to say that w what we want to do as a support to all the, the cigar uh, stores, it's to promote events. So not only myself and Luisito and Billy – but uh, all the blenders, all the, the, the partners, but also Dominic and Tiago will be going to several events all over the country. And yes, of course. I mean, Cuban experience is my, is my home. So <laughs> we will certainly have several events coming. Um, we are uh, setting the dates. There is one event that is already happening in uh, Birmingham, uh, Alabama. Um, there's a wonderful organization called Culture City. Culture City, uh, it's uh, one organization who uh, supports uh, kids with autism. Okay. And uh, they're mainly uh, helping uh, uh, sports venues to be prepared to receive autistic uh, uh, people, kids mm -hmm. uh, of all sorts, mm -hmm. to uh, and providing them with the proper environment because they, they can be very challenging. Oh, going for, into a, yeah. a stadium going for sure. A stadium for, oh, yeah. uh, so several NBA uh, stadiums have complied with what Culture City has created in terms of a standard for uh, for uh, the autistic uh, children that we have um, in our population, and uh, just to honor that amazing uh, organization. Uh, which actually uh, Dominic Wilkins is also a supporter. 
uh, will be in Birmingham on the 21st for a private event. June? Okay. Uh, June 21st. Okay. Wow, you're is, pushing it. <laughs> this is not this is not a public event. Unfortunately, we cannot invite people to come over, but this is a wonderful event. It's a fundraising event. And, uh, and our cigars will be officially soft launched at this event. Okay. And all the proceeds will go towards go to. To, uh, to that specific cause. Wow, that is phenomenal. Yeah, that's, that's, that is you. really a good good cause. Though, I mean, then. in about three weeks, you are really going to be on the road. So, you have no uh, idea, yeah. my friend. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to get some sleep. Yeah. I mean, you, you're really going to be going and going. Do I? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. There's, I don't know, there's, man. there's, you know, there's that old well rested for Vegas. It's the old saying, you know, I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. This is true. This is true. You know, but uh, your adrenaline is definitely pumping you up going through all this. I can, uh, yeah. I can just imagine uh, what you're going to be going through and the excitement yeah. level. Yeah. You're you're in like sixth gear, right? Flying right now, but, man. Man, it's on, a lot of a lot of things. On, on the flight home from Vegas, he'll be crashing. You know, it'll it'll <laughs> finally the adrenaline will finally <laughs> subside. <laughs> and it'll it'll I'm, crash i'm already planning my vacations in mexico man. <laughs> oh that's, there that's you go afterwards. nice you know i i uh one of the things to uh ron that we uh, we talked about i said you know there's certain <laughs> things we cannot like discuss well, it's not even because we didn't want to uh, it's because there's so many things involved with launching new brands you know when you're in the market uh it's easy for you to say you know if you are like a, an aj fernandez say, i'm gonna launch a new cigar next year mm -hmm. it's just like a normal thing for us it's a big thing and there's so many things involved from trademark to branding to right. marketing strategy to, I mean, it's so many details that are involved in this and, uh, and mainly to have the right product and to have quality. So, and that's what we, we always try to, uh, uh, we always do actually, we only launch, we only launch products that we are proud of launching. So, so as a boutique cigar, mm -hmm. we're, how does the FDA, all these rules, are they affecting you? Oh, are you yeah. looking at what's going on? Because that is going to also part one question. Yeah. Part two yeah. is where's the future going with what's happening with you guys then? Mm -hmm. okay, so let's so take the FDA first. I got to be very careful here because yes. I, I have a very crystal clear opinion about this. Mm -hmm. If you look elsewhere, if you look all over the world, the FDA regulating cigars it's nothing new. I mean, even like in South American countries, uh, Central America, they all FDA regulated. If you go to Europe, they all FDA regulated. And it, 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 I know um, what I'm saying might be not so in tune what most of the tobacconists say, but in my opinion, we should just go with it because I mean it's just good for customers. This is good for 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 the industry. If you look if if you look closely. Postponing and delaying these actions are just hurting everybody. And it, they're putting a lot of money into lawyers' pockets. Because huh. it's funny. Uh, it's almost like they're trying to keep the carrot in front of us. They say, oh, don't worry about it. This will be, this was postponed two years from now. Don't worry about it. This is postponed another two years. Actually, we're just kind of really uh, hurting the industry by not really taking what's coming. Uh, I'm not saying that we should regulate the market. Okay? So what I'm saying is, it, I'm just kind of being factual. If you look to the markets in Europe, Eastern Europe, South America, Central America, Canada, for Christ's sake, they're all regulated by the FDA. So let's 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 get rid of this ghost. You know what I'm saying? But isn't yeah, it really about the, the vape and the cigarettes the main obstacle for oh, yeah, no, the, pi uh, the pipes, tobacco, and the cigar smoker? So vibes is something uh, new that's been recently regulated. Cigarettes have been <clears throat> regulated for, for decades. So what is new right now, it's, it, it's to the American market, is the FDA regulating the other tobacco products, specifically the premium cigars. And that's what is it's scaring a lot of people. But listen, the law is really clear, and I want to take this opportunity to clarify even more what that means. A lot of people are saying, oh, everybody's going to get hurt by this FDA action and, uh, and the, the small ones will die, the big ones will strive because they are grandfather. I'm sorry, bullshit. Why, okay. is, why is bullshit? Because everybody needs to be, everybody will have to comply with those regulations. Everybody. But isn't it more about the money cost? Because like, that's what I've been hearing, that the costs yes. are Bringing extortion. New to market. So here's... Yeah. So, 
So let's take this opportunity to really uh, give your public the right information. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, everybody will have to be regulated. There, there are costs to uh, to do all the chemical analysis for all the cigars, to mm -hmm. inspect facilities, all the kind of stuff. Yes, that mm -hmm. will add cost to everybody. But if you look at the industry, what's happening right now, everybody's doing it. People don't even know it. But our cigars, we're all registering with the FDA. I have to send to the FDA every single leaf that goes in my cigar needs to be specified to the FDA right now. Although we don't have to, we're doing it. Okay. And everybody's doing it because no one wants to be get by surprise. So the only difference between the brands that are, that are not they are grandfathered, it's that those brands, if when those changes are implemented, they don't have to pull out their products off the shelf. So if they if they are uh, they have some more time to comply with the the rules uh, for the small ones or the ones who are uh, the new brands they will have to uh, basically if they don't have the FDA uh, requirements already in place then they'll have to pull out their products out of the shelf but the truth is everybody is complying already everybody's okay. getting ready for that mm -hmm. Uh, and but this going back to what 2007, so we got 12 years. That's what I'm saying. That they're yeah. looking at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it, it comes back from 2007. I know there's several uh, new bills trying to uh, be uh, pushed. There's a lot of lobby from uh, both sides. A lot of resistance. A lot of lobby. Um, again, I believe that everybody in the industry will benefit of just getting this thing resolved. This is my personal opinion. I'm not speaking for the industry. I'm mm -hmm. not speaking fine. for no, no. Yeah. Uh, anyone but me. So I think that uh, this is inevitable. And, and, and the more the rules are exposed and clear and, 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 <coughs> and open, more uh, we all will benefit. This is my personal opinion. You can get like, again, guys, cigar is something that we put in our mouths all the time. Yes. How do you know? what kind of chemicals were used for, uh, you know, control uh, all these diseases that we have in the foods? How do you know, actually, uh, how was the, the processing of that tobacco? How do you know what it's in there? It's really what they say it's in there. No, you don't. We you go don't. by, we trust, so I by, mean, the leaf. Yeah. <laughs> by, by, yeah. saying, by saying this, I'm not going against the industry, quite the opposite. What I'm saying is, yes, I want I want everybody to know how I make my cigars. I want I want everybody to know what is in my cigar, so they're comfortable with my cigar. The fact is, I export for Europe and Eastern Europe for a long time, so I've been uh, checked, and and people have come to my factory, uh, you know, authorities from from uh, from France, from Spain. I have submitted my cigars for chemical analysis for. All these countries, if I export to Brazil, which I do a lot, okay. my cigars, they need to be FDA approved to get into that market. So we're all used to this. This is nothing new. But uh, again, I don't know who, who this misinformation benefits. I, it seems to me that like it's more like about the lawyers. And, and no, they always, the lawyers get involved with the insurance the companies. The it's world. always about that. I mean, every Which, podcast. And they're doing yeah. their job. I'm not criticizing them. They're doing their job. You know, I, my, I come from a family of lawyers, so I'm not saying <laughs> lawyers are bad. <laughs> lawyers are great. But I don't know. I mean, I think that, that may be just like a misinformation. Uh, people just don't know what, what it is. And you see, unfortunately, some reps saying things that uh, doesn't make sense, you know. So, yeah, there is a regulation coming, uh, or if it comes or if not comes, I think it's better if you know the rules now. I also heard, I don't know, again, if this is rumor or not, but there's so much talk of it um, that not so much is cigars, because there, but there are a few, but a lot of like uh, pipe tobacco, for instance, uh, things that have toppings on them, flavors and yeah, stuff. And they're, trying, they're trying to get rid of all that. Well, that's... Probably um, eighty percent of pipe tobacco because it all has different uh, toppings. You know, it could be vanilla, it could be mm -hmm. chocolate tasting, whatever it is. You know, yeah. how is that going to affect that industry? I have no idea because, to be honest, I know nothing about uh, about that specific segment uh, of the tobacco industry. My, I, I'm, I'm on the cigars. No, I know uh, that. 
but we so we don't infuse anything that so we don't work with infusion i know a few companies who do, who do that i just don't it's not my what about cigars that are infused with with bourbon and you know things so, like that yeah the, so yeah. so when you most of the cigars that says is uh it's age in, in in bourbon caskets and this is not infusion so basically they're picking just getting the the bourbon uh caskets and put the leaves i mean old ones and put the leaves inside so that's not technically considered uh yeah but it's uh, drawing that taste out of the wood yeah i mean if you <laughs> if, if you roll if you roll a, a tobacco in cuba you're gonna taste the the, the saltiness of the ocean <laughs> sure yeah. Yeah. absolutely so like if you if you roll a tobacco in a in a in a, a, a rainy season in nicaragua yeah they do come a little more earthier mm, okay. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm so i mean it's it's a very thin line between what is infused and what is not, but technically on on the cigar industry, if you age uh, a leaf in a in a barrel, it's not considered actually uh, okay. an infusion That's at all. Interesting. But there are there are infusions. Some people just uh, usually they infuse the binder uh, or the wrapper sometimes. Uh, so the binder is infused by basically spraying that specific liquor or or flavor into mm. the binder. So. And I, I know some companies that do that really well. I, it's just not our thing. So. Right. No, no. no I, yeah. I'm glad it's not. <laughs> that was just curious gotta, because, again, there's so much uh, talk about how the FDA is going to um, yeah, pretty much put things off the market if yeah. this comes to be. So that's mm. that's the statement that, that, that bothers me. You know, like, you know, the, the FDA is putting all the boutique cigars out of the market. You know, uh, I, I don't see that happening, and if you read the law carefully, if you really get a honest legal opinion of what the law says or what the project of the law says and what is this bill all about, it's not about taking anyone out of the market. It's it's pretty much about regulating the market, and, and I, I don't agree with certain regulations, and don't take me wrong. you know, I, I'm, I don't agree with certain things that are in that bill, but I'm just being factual. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is inevitable. Yeah. This will happen. So let's all get prepared and get over. Mm. Because this, who benefit? I mean, this whole delay and this whole thing of postponing, you know, the 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 law. I mean, I don't know, man. This is going to take forever, and and I think this benefits a lot of uh, the big guys, for sure, because everybody's. You know, it, it's funny. I, I was talking to this guy who uh, just did a pre-order and he was telling me, oh, what about if the FDA implements, how am I going to be able to order from you again? I said, what, what do you mean? I said, because I know you're all going to be out of the market soon. So who told you this? Oh, I had this rep who came here from this company, which I'm well, not going to well. say the name, of course, who told me that. So and and that's well, he's just what trying I, to sell more boxes on the spot, probably. Basically, you know, because that rapper's from a big company, and he they say, you know, my brand is grandfathered. So you're gonna come on, guys. I really, honestly. That's too bad look, that they went that look, route. Look, yeah. look at all the cigars that've been winning mm. as the cigar of the year. It has a rate mostly of, boutiques. Of, of ninety. Mm. Come on, they're all boutique cigars. Exactly. Yeah. Are yeah. you telling me they're gonna take that away from your customer? <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. 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 No. Hmm. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this. It's incredible stuff. Yes. But bringing yes. something new to market is going to be an extreme expense for anybody. Yeah. I mean, so I'm hearing I, numbers that are know, just. You it's it again. Those numbers are uh, again. This this no this the FDA has not explicitly tell anyone what will be the requirements. We have a general idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, like we have to tell them uh, what region of, of you know, in our case from Nicaragua, what region from Nicaragua that leaf comes from, and then we we'll tell them, and they can randomly spec the boxes to to find out if that composition is what we told them it is. Okay, uh, and that's kind of easy to to know if you if you were an expert, you will know what kind of you know if the leaves are coming from from that specific region or not. Uh, but uh, again. The chemical analysis will tell how much uh, uh, fertilizer was used uh, on that specific product, or or uh, holy cow, yeah. So <laughs> it's it's actually basically the most important part is the fertilization. So they want to know what kind of products we're using to fertilize the plants. Um, well, that's so where we, we get have, into the chemical aspect of it. Yeah. So that chemical analysis, it's not expensive, 
what would be really expensive is if we're not prepared to provide that information to have your product removed from the shelf. Try to imagine yeah. uh, big boutique cigars. You know, we mentioned a couple names here. If they have to stop selling for one month. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Or, I if, mean, they, or wow. if, if they have to stop selling for two months. E even like yours, you said you're Luciano Travel, there's only 60,000, but some of these bigger guys, you know, they could make, you know, a million cigars. Exactly. And if they have to pull those off the shelf, I mean, that's that's exactly. millions of dollars a month that they're getting hit. That would cripple kill, them. Yeah. You can kill a brand because of that. Yep. So that's why everybody's getting prepared. Yeah. I think we are overprepared. If you want to know the truth, I think. Well, that's a great well, thing. I mean, yeah, at right. least for the consumer part, we, you know, thank God, because right. this topic is on everybody's lips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a everybody talking about it, and you know, we try to give FDA information on every podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we print something out. Kyle usually reads it just to get the information out there, yeah. because you know what uh, that rep just did was so wrong mm -hmm. to to that cigar lounge or store, mm -hmm. but to pass bad information like that, it, it, see, it came back to you and it's like, no, this is, this is wrong. This yeah. is, mm -hmm. that, that's why <sighs> Shame I, on I, him, I like to use this opportunity of being here in our show to really uh, explain that and clarify that. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. not a lawyer. Of course, I'm not speaking from a legal aspect, mm -hmm. but from my understanding of the law and for what I've been explained by not only one lawyer, but several lawyers. Uh, again, there's nothing in this bill that will be partial to anyone in this industry. So the, the law is for everybody. Okay. Uh, the only law was the law who, uh, who benefit the pre-existing brands uh, that we call the, the, the grandfather brands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those brands have the, just the benefit of having a little more of time to comply with what everybody else would have to comply with. They, it's, they are not saying that if you're a grandfather, you don't have to comply with. Oh, so they're not free and clear. Oh, you're not. You all have, we all See, that's the information comply. we got. Anybody yeah. before no. 2007, it's they're safe. They, well, they are safe in a sense that they, they cannot, if, if let's say we got, we got caught by surprise. Let's say uh, nobody expects, uh, you know, the law being, uh, being uh, implemented tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and that happens tomorrow. This will hurt me for sure because although I have, I'm prepared, it will take me maybe two weeks, a month to uh, maybe go through my process. Uh, if you are a brand that's grandfathered, then uh, you don't have to take your product out of the shelf. Basically, you can continue selling and then complying along the way. You're going to have more time to comply with. Mm. But it's the same rule for everybody. Oh, okay. That's okay. interesting. All right. So I, I did have a question here from one of sure our followers. Thing. Yep. And you don't have to answer because you don't. But his question is, outside of your uh, cigar brand, what is your favorite stick or other sticks that you enjoy? And do you have a top five? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you put them on the spot, man. You put them on the spot. <laughs> so... Uh, I would say that uh, anything that comes from Carrillo is something that I really, really, uh, I give it up to him. He's, he's an amazing blender. I really admire uh, companies who show who their master blenders are. Okay. So some of the brands we smoke, we don't even know who really created that, that specific brand. We lose track of it. So I like the fact that what I smoke from Carrillo, for example, like the Majestic, which just got the cigar of the year, well-deserved well deserved that cigar is just amazing uh or uh i can tell you about all the padrones that i smoke i mm. love everything that padrone makes. padrones Absolutely. are very good line we're not gonna lie it's well, the, it's there and they're always consistent <laughs> and, and to be honest and i can humbly say that our philosophy of quality so what we strive to be what we're pursuing it's to be someone close to what padron is mm. Okay. That's I think I think he great is, quality. I think he's That's a benchmark for us. That is you awesome. Know? I I could say maybe a name of big com bigger companies than Padron. Yeah. You know, yeah. Padron is a wonderful operation. It's a boutique. It's a wonderful boutique cigar operation. But there are companies out there who sells maybe one hundred times what he sells. Okay. But the consistency but that you get a Padron, no matter what stick. Our cousin Frank, who usually is on this show, and he's just hanging. 
we haven't gotten in there. He said he's cool. He loves listening to you said, but <laughs> he is a Padron uh, aficionado. Yeah. He swears by it. He, he introduced really Bob and I into it. Just the consistency, the even uh, burn, uh, the structure of the cigar, the unra- it's just it's perfection. It is yep. what really I is. we try to put everybody on that level. So mm-hmm. we can't wait to try yours and see. You know, are we yep. right there? And <laughs> and by you just making that statement assures me that this is going to be as close, if not the same, or even better. It's a lot to strive. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, I I cannot forget to mention Placencia. Oh, Placencia. Okay. Yes. So the Alma Viva Placencia for me, it's one of his best creations so far, and that's my goal for when I'm not smoking my cigar right now. It's either the Magic Stick from Carillo or the Placencia Alma Viva. So mm-hmm. Which we do have at the Cuban, right? Yes, we do. We do. Have yeah. the Cuban, yeah, the Cuban, Cuban experience has that yeah. line. We have the X. We have many of the Placencia lines, and I really admire what he does. So, awesome. well, I can't Good wait stuff. to see that humidor filled even more with your line. And <laughs> I, I mean, I think that humidor's <laughs> got to get a little bigger. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. we got to talk Bill. We got to blow out the back of it a little bit more and put a couple of shells down the middle. I mean, well, there's you... a couple of surprises coming. That oh, uh, oh, 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 stay tuned, yeah. folks. <laughs> You heard it here again. <laughs> More exclusive. <laughs> right here. The Great Lakes Smoke Show gets it all. And, uh, well, we are coming to the end of the second part of the show. Uh, so, what, 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 five minutes to be back for the third part? <laughs> <laughs> well, he wants to go smoke a cigar. Will you have time good. to enjoy a cigar with us? Man, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I like to invite you back to my uh, my messy deck. We can hang out there on the outside since it's a beautiful night. Sounds and uh, Kyle, you can stay a little bit later tonight. And I, unfortunately, I got a, a five a.m. calling to get to work tomorrow. Yeah, so I can't. that's all right. See, so you're young. You're young. <laughs> I'm not that young. <laughs> I'm not that young anymore. I well, wish I could, yeah, but well. uh, yeah, uh, you guys enjoy one for me. All right. All right. We'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll enjoy mine on my drive home. So <laughs> me and my wife is listening and my son, make sure you get the deck going, put the lights on outside so we can walk around without uh, tripping over ourselves. Uh, Luciana, I can't thank you enough. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And I know I speak from everybody here. Um, we are so, so excited for you, Billy, uh, Lewis, uh, Dorothy. Can't forget about yeah. Dorothy, Jamie, Jamie, John, and John. Jamie. Jamie, John, um, the, <laughs> Tiago you know, Splitter, Dominic Wilkins. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, and everybody involved that uh, has taken part of these eleven cigar projects. We are super excited about being part of it. Uh, thank you for inviting us, and we are uh, <laughs> we're counting the days. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And please come again. Yes. Oh, we, well, we got to promote. Yeah, Even yeah. after Vegas, we oh, can do yeah, it. Yeah. Or we're waiting. We'll do a, uh, an event Looking at the forward. Cuban like we normally do yeah, for all the other event events. Cuban. We can let, do it Let there. me say hi to my daughters, too. Sure. Deborah, That's Rebecca, sure. Rachel, hey, and hey. My, my wife, Cynthia, who will be at uh, in Las Vegas as well. All right. Here we go. Folks, and, you heard it all here. Exclusive information. Uh, groundbreaking uh, cigar information by uh, our wonderful guests, and uh, we can't thank them enough. And we can't thank you for listening and checking in with us every single week. We always see new faces and new people coming on, and we hope uh, you are enjoying the show. We're here in, for a long time. Well, they know and, where to um, get the scoops on stuff. They yeah. do. Yeah. And just a couple of dates. Uh, next Tuesday night, uh, June 11th, we will be doing a, uh, a remote. We'll be out at uh, Kenny the King Cigar Lounge in Lakemore next Tuesday. We'll be out of studio, but down the road at Did Lakemore. Did we uh, get clearance with the, for that? Uh, the DAV uh, event with, with a couple of other our friends. Yeah. Did we have clearance and, uh, for that yet? Did we know for sure we got Well, it's all set, and we also have okay. live music there. <laughs> um, so we're going to have uh, Paul K. And... Um, <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> Paul Kay and uh, Dave Ramey from uh, Trombone Dave and the Lawn Clippings. So uh, check us out next Tuesday, uh, 6.30, and that's the event with Dav and our sales rep, Mike, will be there, and we'll have live music. So for all you local folks, come on by, stop by, say hello, and check us out. Thank you very much, we'll and uh, we'll see you then. Have a great week, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you.